Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk about where I fish in the fall. So for those of you who don't know, I am a surf fishing guide on Cape Ann. Uh, I guided a lot this fall, and I kind of want to go over why and where I was guiding this fall. And uh, it's really important to figure out where the, the bass are to be able to figure out where the bite's going to be. And sometimes it's really difficult, especially if you don't have a well-connected group to figure that out. So these are the things that I'll do, you know, and then I did before I really knew a lot of people. And then obviously the easiest way is like, you know, you have people all up and down the, the coast being like, hey, the fish are here. And then everybody goes there. It's pretty easy. But, you know, a lot of the time that's not the case. A lot of the time you're going to be by yourself. Nobody else is fishing that day and whatever. So stuff like that. And so what I was trying to first think about is where's the, the bait going to be? We have a bunch of different bait, but primarily you're going to be seeing pinup bunker around. That's going to be fueling the most of the blitzes that we get. There can always be silver sides or rain bait or herring or mackerel or like there's a bunch of different stuff that it could potentially be. But for the most part, peanut bunker is a fairly average bait. So for our example, we'll talk about peanut bunker or their baby Atlantic Menhaden for those of you that may not know. And so what happens is those baby Atlantic Menhaden are filter feeders. They get blown around by the wind a lot. The wind really will predict where those where the bait's going to be. And then the bass will try to push them into coves and into little areas where they can trap them. And then they can feed on them as easy as possible. Whether they're, you know, pushing them into an estuary and they're using the estuary as a, as a place to confine the bait. Or they're pushing them onto like a sand beach or rocks. They all do about the same thing. So what I tried to first look at is the wind and where the wind direction is from. Uh, and, you know, we're fortunate enough to have uh, Cape Ann being out in the water so we can pretty much fish every single wind direction there is is going to be in a different area which breaks it down a lot for us we can literally like hey it's a north wind they're probably going to be here and then you can always start where the wind's going to be but and this is also starting from scratch as i was saying like if you don't have that connection of guys or you know or you don't have any prior knowledge to where the fish are because obviously the fish are going to move from north to south they point south and they go so if they end up they're on the north side of Cape Ann, they're gonna move from the north side, they're gonna be in the middle of Cape Ann, and then they're gonna be on the south side of Cape Ann, and you're gonna to have to follow them around. So if you knew that they were on the north side, one day they're probably gonna be either still on the north side or maybe right in the middle of Cape Ann. So you gotta keep that stuff in mind, but the wind is a good starting point. So if there's a dramatic wind change, so it was blowing like south and then it blows north, the fish that are probably, if they were on the south side of Cape Ann, would have probably been blown offshore. So what you're hoping for is if there's any fish that was north of Cape Ann or on the north side of Cape Ann, that those fish might have been blown onshore uh, with the bait. And so I'll always go and start there and, and look around. I like to have binoculars with me and I drive a lot in the fall and you gotta work for it a lot of the time in the fall. Like if you're gonna have shots at really big fish, you're gonna wanna work for that stuff because it's the very end of the season, so this is really the last gasp and your last chance getting anything of size. So you really, I mean, you know where the general area with the wind is, where you're gonna start, general area that this fish will probably be. So I'll start with the binoculars and I'll go and I'll drive along to all the different points and coves that I know and I'll be looking for birds. I'll be looking for fish, like obviously jumping out of the water. And then a lot of the time, if it's a sunny day or a fairly sunny day out, you can look with your binoculars in the water and you can scan around and you can look for the flickering of fish under the water and you'll be able to tell if they're peanut bunker or if they're mackerel because mackerel will look like mini dolphins on the surface where a peanut bunker maybe just look like little raindrops because every once in a while they'll jump out of the water or they'll just be shiny and dimply underneath the surface of the water which is a little different from other bait fish. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start by looking around and seeing if I can actually see those fish in the water and uh, if they're not blitzing at that time, there's a good chance that there's bass around those bait, around that bait. So if I've driven around a lot and I haven't seen anything, and then I find a place that has bait, like a cove that might have bait, it's always go good to maybe take a few casts because you never know that like that might just blow up in the next 15 minutes. There could be 40 fish in that cove blitzing on them and they're just taking a little break from feeding. Oh, or you just step up there and you cast out and there is big bass that are just trolling around, but they're actually not breaking the surface. 
So if you can find the bait, it's a good idea to maybe take a few casts, see what's going on, uh, and then maybe you'd move if you don't see anything. Or if you have a good feeling like there's a lot of bait everywhere, because that happened this year, like there's so much peanut bunker, you could go to every single cove and every cove would have peanut bunker. And if that was the case, I would just keep moving because eventually you're going to find out where that small pod of fish are that like, it's not that small. I mean, the, there would be a lot of bass, but uh, in the grand scheme of like space uh, in the water, and <laughs> they're pretty small. So you would travel around and you drive up and down looking for those bait in the water. And if you can find the bait, that's great. But you know, obviously we want to keep moving sometimes, as I was saying, and look for birds, look for those bass, see where, you know, a lot of the time, if you find a, a cove or a place where there's a ton of birds like cormorants and you have seagulls and terns and whatever that maybe are just hanging out on the rocks or just flying around or whatever, preferably not like just like cruising because a lot of the time those birds will be cruising and that's different from when they're like actively feeding on the surface of the water and those birds are diving down versus like the birds just hanging out on the rocks. Cause if they're hanging out on the rocks, there's a good chance that there's probably blitzing fish that are right there. And that's always another place where, you know, you can stop and I bet if you look closer, you'll probably even see bait in the water. Uh, and then you can go and cast and you might've shot at those fish. So as I was, I've talked a lot about like how you find them, but the different places that I, obviously everywhere, every single structure type could potentially hold blitzing fish throughout the fall. But it's, as I said, you can narrow it down to different places. Boulder fields are fantastic and they can sometimes, sometimes hold bait. I prefer to look at coves because what's going to happen there is they're going to push the bait into coves and that's where they're going to trap them and they'll stay there for a longer period of time and that tends to be a better area. Where you can go to like a sandy beach, the bass are going to be moving so unbelievably fast. If you show up there, you know, they could be right in front of you and they could be like five miles down the beach in an hour. It's just like everything happens so fast on a beach. It's, it's really hard to kind of pinpoint and track them down because of that. So you want to find places like coves that they can trap the bait. They can also trap them in estuaries. That's always a great like place to look to see if they've trapped bait. Um, another place that you might really like, th another place you might think about looking is like little back bay areas. So just outside of harbors is another place which is like a giant cove, but there's a little current and that does trap a lot of bait fish. And a lot of the time the peanut bunker will get flushed out of those harbors uh, in the late fall. And there'll be a ton of bass that are just out there waiting for them in the back bays. Uh, and sometimes that can be a lot of fun because the water is fairly shallow in certain areas. And uh, you can track these fish down in very shallow water and still catch some pretty si decent sized bass out of those schools of fish. So those are the kind of the different areas that I'm looking for and kind of how I look to uh, target these bass during the like fall seasons. I really am focusing in on the bait. I'm looking at the wind and the weather a lot just to see what's happening. Uh, and if you find the fish one day, you know, and they're on shore and the wind blows them offshore the next day, odds are they're gonna be traveling offshore. And then if the wind turns again, they get blown back on shore, then they will probably be a few miles further south than they were. So I'd always start maybe where you, where you last saw those fish and then move further south from there to find that school. And then hopefully, if I mean, it's always possible that that school gets blown away and then you just gotta wait for that next batch of fish to come in. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.